a survivor of the Rwandan genocide, a journalist who covered that genocide, and an academic who spent a career documenting it. All of their experiences relate to this man, Felician Kabuga, and the radio station he created, Radio Mil Kalin, or RTLM. After 26 years on the run, Kabuga was finally arrested last month in this apartment block in Paris, nearly 6,000 miles from home. A French court has ruled that his next stop will be Arusha, Tanzania, and the UN's International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Among the charges, Felicia and Kabuga will face two counts of crimes against humanity and five counts of genocide, including this one, the direct and public incitement to commit genocide. It is not possible to talk about the genocide without talking about Felicien Kabuga. He was the financier of RTLM. It was a radio station run by genocide ideologues and all day long it was used to insult and demonize Tutsis to say that they were a cancer. They would call Tutsi, for example, cockroaches. They would refer to them as snakes. They were trying to sort of objectify them and distance Rwandans from one another. From its very beginning, it started with a genocide agenda. A few days before it even went on air, a publication called Kangura on its front page, advertising airtime, they said, now the Tutsis are finished. RTLM was exploiting ethnic divisions that had long existed within Rwanda. During the colonial era, the minority Tutsis were treated as superior to the majority Hutus and were therefore charged with running the country. In 1959, the Hutus came to power in a revolution and three years later gained independence from colonial rule. However, the fear of Tutsi rule returning lingered on. And over the next three decades, there would be outbreaks of ethnically motivated violence that would send hundreds of thousands of Tutsi refugees into neighboring countries. Kabuga and his fellow RTLM co-founders knew that they could use the station to play on those fears. But first they needed listeners, and the strategy they put in place had a target demographic. RTLM played really good music. I think it was a way of attracting the youth in particular. The people who own the radio station weren't stupid. They used music to engage listeners, and then in the middle of a track, they would cut straight to the messages of hate. When the genocide began, the musical instruments were so nice to the young people who, who would even feel like dancing and dancing using with their machete as they were attacking the victims. It's evil genius. How you, you entertain killers as, as a way of taking away the guilt. This is what the Arterium did. By the 1990s, exiled Tutsi refugees had formed the Rwandan Patriotic Front, or RPF, which started launching incursions back into the country. As with most soldiers, when the rebels trained, they sang. The songs would become popular in Kigali. Jean-Pierre Sagakutu used to make a living selling music cassettes in the city, some of which contained those rebel songs. And when one of the cassettes made it onto RTLM, it nearly cost him his life. When I had my name read out on the radio, I went cold, cold to my stomach. I thought it's over for me, they're going to kill me. When RTLM played the rebel songs, Saguhutu says that they would call him out by name and accuse him of trying to galvanize support for the RPF. When the killings began, he knew that he would be a target, 
so he went into hiding in a septic tank. I entered my hall with a small radio. I had listened to RTLM solidly for a week. They used to say, Jean-Pierre lives in this neighborhood. You have to catch him. You have to kill him. He's very dangerous. If you don't kill him, he's going to kill you. That was it, all day long. After a while, my batteries ran out. They ran out because I stayed in my hall for two months and 15 days. The genocide began on April 6, 1994, when Rwanda's Hutu president, Juvenal Habriamana's plane was shot down. RTLM was reportedly the first station to announce the news. They blamed it on Tutsi rebels, but in the week leading up to the crash, listeners say that they were being told to stay tuned for a big event. Catherine Bond was a freelance journalist based in Nairobi at the time. When news of the president's death broke, she scrambled to Kigali. She would soon experience firsthand the insidious nature of RTLM's broadcasts. Catherine Bond, Channel 4 News, Kigali. We were able to get a lift on a convoy of French troops going into Kigali, into the center of Kigali, to pick up um, expatriates. And at that point, Radio Mille Colline had called people out to greet the French troops. And so we saw people who'd come out, out of their houses alongside the road. When we passed back along the same spot, there were just lines of, of people's bodies. And it transpired that Radio Mille Colline had called everybody out to greet the French. And then, in doing so, people had come out of their houses who were Tutsis in hiding, and the Hutu militiamen had been able to identify them and had moved in and killed them. You can see footages, television footages of um, uh, killers on roadblocks holding a machete in one hand and a radio on the other. Tom Mindahiro is one of the leading experts on the Rwandan genocide whose life's work has been to document the atrocities that were committed. He has collected a paper trail that shows how Kabuga not only set up and funded RTLM, but also sat at the top of the channel's hierarchy, meaning that the editorial line began and ended with him. Mindahiro recalls how in the lead up to the genocide, there were attempts by moderate Hutus, even in government, to stop RTLM from inciting the mass murder of the Tutsis. In November 1993, the RTLM was summoned by the then Minister of Information and Kabuga headed the delegation. They were told that their radio was incendiary and was inciting the genocide against the Tutsi. This warning was not respected, and instead, the minister and his family were totally annihilated on the 7th of April, 1994. After a killing spree that lasted a hundred days and took nearly a million lives, the RPF managed to stop the genocide. Many of the perpetrators, Kabuga among them, fled the country, part of a mass exodus of Hutu refugees. The story spread too. Governments across the region have used RTLM, the spectre of what happened in Rwanda, to suppress media freedom in their own countries. There has never been a station like Radio Mille Colline, a genocide where the killers were armed with a radio in one hand and a machete in the other. 26 years later, history has already judged Felicia and Kabuga. Now the courts will do the same.